Study basers. How you pluck your strings has an impact on almost every note of every song that you'll ever play. So it's very important to get right. And it's also one of the easiest places to develop bad habits. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about how to pluck the strings, how to silence or mute the strings, and just how to get a great tone out of your plucking technique. A couple of quick things before we start. So your fingers are numbered one, two, three, and four. So we don't number the thumb like you do on other instruments. And a second thing is you'll want to keep your fingernails trimmed fairly short. So some bass players, they like the sound of their fingernail, but most people find that it gets in the way. A lot of technique is not what people expect. So most people expect bass technique to be all about producing sound. But a lot of technique is really about preventing sound. So on the bass, we typically want one string ringing at a time. But if we don't have that, it creates a really muddy sound. So that sounds pretty awful, right? What we want is to clean that up and sound more like this. So how do we do that? Well, to stop a string from ringing out, we need to touch it with a finger somehow. And it can be a finger in either hand. So you'll see in the next lesson that both hands are involved in muting. So on the way up the strings, your plucking hand is in charge of muting the strings. But when you're descending the strings, your fretting hand is going to be doing a lot of the muting work too. So a big part of this lesson will be about developing a solid muting strategy. We'll be discussing the use of your thumb quite a bit. And as you'll see, the thumb is a big part of your overall muting strategy. Now, many bass players, they anchor their thumb on a pickup and then use their first two fingers to pluck the strings. But now the location of your bass pickups might just choose where you pluck along the string. But something to know is that where you pluck along the length of the string has an impact on the tone that you get. So plucking closer to the neck gives you a warmer, fuller tone. And then plucking closer to the bridge gives you a tighter percussive tone. So in the beginning, I suggest finding a place in the middle that gives you a good balanced tone between those two sounds. The most important part of this lesson is this. Use your first two fingers to pluck the strings. And it's very important that you develop a consistent alternation pattern. So you want to either go one, two, one, two, or two, one, two, one. So it doesn't matter which one you start on, but uh, you need to go back and forth as consistently as possible. So in the beginning, it's going to seem much easier just to play with one finger. And you can get away with that for a while, but as songs and things that you play get more advanced and uh, more complicated, you won't be able to keep up just with the one finger. And this is one of the worst habits to have to break. So the sooner you, you get this down, the better. Now, when you work on this, I always recommend that you say your finger numbers out loud. So one, two, one, two, or two, one, two, one. So remember, using two fingers is half the work of using one. Now let's break down how to actually pluck the strings with our fingers. So the motion that you use is very, very important. What you want to do is use the end of your finger and roll across the top of the string. So what everyone wants to do in the beginning is they want to go from underneath and pull the string out this way. And what you can, if you listen, you can hear it has a very thin, weak sound. 
Whereas when you roll across the top of the string, you get a much fuller, bassier tone. Now, the follow through motion of the plucking is really important too. So just like it, when you swing a bat or a tennis racket or a golf club, uh, the, you don't stop the motion when you hit the ball. So you carry that motion through. And that gives you a much fuller, stronger tone that way. Now, be careful not to pluck into your thumb. You want to pluck somewhere behind your thumb so that you can properly follow through. Now, whenever there's a string below, you always want your plucking finger to land on that string. That's going to be a big part of muting the strings. So when this A string is ringing out, when I pluck the D, the follow through landing on that on that A string mutes it. So again, A and then here D. So that motion is really critical for keeping everything really quiet. So if we don't do that, again we end up with we end up with too many strings ringing out. Now, we'll cover later in the video how to mute every single string. When people go hear live music, it's often so loud that people just imagine the players are just attacking the strings, that they're plucking really, really hard. But they're not. So this, it's a very small sound here that your amplifier and the sound system then takes and makes big. So don't let that influence how hard you pluck the strings. What you want to do is pluck very lightly. So if you pluck too hard, it can make you sound out of tune, it'll cause strings to buzz, it slows you down, it wears you out, and worst of all, it'll uh, maybe lead to hand injuries. So uh, the forceful repetition uh, of plucking really, really hard is often what leads to hand injuries. So that's the stress part of repetitive stress injury. So that's a danger uh, for beginners, especially when they practice without an amp, uh, because what they'll do is they'll pluck really, really hard so that they can hear what notes they're playing. So you want to avoid doing that. So always use an amp, pluck very lightly, and uh, let the amp do the work. So your fingers are not the amplifier. So far, we've talked a little bit about muting with the thumb and the follow through plucking, but Let's go string by string and see how to mute everything. So I'm going to show you several muting strategies, and then we'll talk about why you might choose one versus another. Now you mute the E string with your thumb by gently sliding it down and touching it. So think of it like an on-off switch. On, off, on, off. So it's a very, very subtle motion. So you should just hover a few millimeters above the string and come down that way. So a lot of people want to put their thumb way up here, but this is way too much movement. And when things get faster, it's not going to work. So rest your thumb on the face of the pickup, not on the top. Now be careful of don't push on the string either. So you just lightly touch, lightly rest on that E string. Now, whenever you play any other string, your thumb's just going to stay there. Now, when you pluck the A string, nothing special really needs to happen. So as long as your thumb is touching the E string, it's going to keep it quiet. But for good tone, you still want to do the follow through pluck motion where you land on the string below. That's just a good habit to always have. Now, when you pluck on the D string, if I go from A and I pluck on the D, that follow through motion and landing on that A string is what stops it. So if I go here A, D, or A, D, we get the mute by the follow through plucking. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. When we go to the G, the top string, there's a problem. Our E will be muted with the thumb 
and our D string will be muted by the follow through plucking. But there's nothing to mute the A string. So that pesky A string is going to ring out all the time when you don't want it to. So the solution in this muting strategy is to use your ring finger to lightly touch the A string only when you're playing on the G. So it would, that would look and sound like this. So here's A, and then I jump up, I'm muting with the ring finger. Again. So it's it's just a very subtle motion. It's very, very graceful. Your finger's already right there. You just drop it down. So to review, you'll mute the E with your thumb. When you play A, nothing has to happen. When you play D, the follow through pluck mutes the A string. And finally, when you play the G, your ring finger is touching that A string. So you'll you'll really see the importance of all of this muting when you start to skip between strings. Like going from the E to the D, if we don't mute with a thumb, it sounds very muddy and noisy. They both ring out at the same time. So if I mute with a thumb, it clears it up. And then the same thing happens with the A to the G. Now another common way to mute that pesky A string is by using your thumb on two strings. So a lot of bass players will do this. They, they rest their thumb on the A string whenever they're playing higher on the G. So this way, the back of my thumb is lightly touching the E string, and the end of my thumb is just resting gently on the A string. And again, you'd only need this playing on that highest string. Now, that's a good technique, but I find that it's a little bit too much moving around when you're crossing the strings quite a bit. Whereas the ring finger is very subtle, very little moving around. Another popular approach to muting the strings is what's called floating thumb technique. In floating thumb technique, you use your thumb to mute multiple strings, and it just glides on, on the top of the strings. So if we're playing on the G, then our follow through plucking is still muting the D string, but our thumb is here muting the E and the A. And if I go to the D string, thumb floats up and just mutes the E. And if I go to the A string, my thumb can move out of the way. So this is a great technique if you have a five string or a six string bass or God help you more than that. It really helps you mute many strings all at the same time. Which muting strategy is better? Well, there's not a right answer. Every player is different. And it depends on the bass that you play. So there are a lot of things that factor into it. I'm going to give you some advice. If you're going to play a six string bass or more strings, then definitely go with the floating thumb technique because you're going to run out of fingers to mute all of those strings. And doing this across so many strings is going to be just too much of a range of motion. So we want things to be a little bit more efficient. Now, if you play four string bass, my preference is the ring finger muting technique. So it's very graceful, it's very efficient, uh, and in a lot of styles, you're not even playing the G string that often, so, so you won't even be using that ring finger very much. So that's a very efficient technique, but the other technique of moving your thumb over to the E and the A is equally good. Now, uh, if you play five string bass, you have a number of possibilities. So you won't go wrong doing the floating thumb technique, uh, but a lot of people might do some sort of hybrid of the first two techniques. 
where you mute the, the B and the E strings with your thumb, and then you mute the A string with your ring finger. So it's going to be up to you. Play around with it. See what, what seems comfortable and natural. The ring finger is not going to feel very natural at first, probably, but it pays off working on it. Um, but just decide, be consistent, and mute those strings. A common question that I hear from students is, do you always alternate your two fingers? Well, as you progress, you'll know when you can take shortcuts and when you shouldn't. But in the beginning, it's very important for you to develop that consistent habit of two fingers back and forth. So it's just a hard, hard habit to break of doing one finger. So as much as you can, alternate. But now there are times when using the same finger twice in a row might make sense. So, for example, if you're descending the strings and you're only playing one note on each string, one possibility is to drag or rake your finger across the strings. Now, some people will say, no, you should still alternate pluck when you do that. And other people will say, well, no, you use the same finger because it's already on that string waiting to pluck. But overall, the more you alternate your fingers, the less work you'll be doing. Another piece of advice that I like to give students is when you practice, watch your plucking hand. Don't watch your fretting hand. So everybody's instinct is to watch this hand. But most of the things that go wrong in that hand will cause bad sounds. So if it sounded like that, you would fix it because it doesn't sound good. But in your plucking hand, a lot of things won't sound bad, but they become bad habits. For example, just plucking with one finger, it doesn't sound bad when you do that, but it'll be a problem later on. So uh, try to avoid the instinct of watching that hand and just listen to that hand and instead watch your plucking hand. We've covered a lot of fine details in this lesson, and I would not expect you to perfect it in just a week or two. So what will happen is you'll learn a new song, and you'll discover problems in your technique, and then you'll fix it. So it's this ongoing process. Now, what you should do is come back to this lesson from time to time and see what you might have forgotten or what you might have missed. Now, if you're a beginner, the really important parts to focus on are the two-finger alternate plucking, and the proper plucking motion to get a good tone out of your bass. The other things like the muting, they're gonna fix themselves with time because it's gonna bother you when you hear those extra strings ringing out. But the two finger plucking doesn't bother you uh, in the beginning and then the uh, plucking motion might not bother you. So be very vigilant with those. On study bass, you can find exercises to work on your plucking technique. Mm -hmm.